Amen, amen. Who's out there this evening this amen? Amen? Let me know if you can hear me, please. Appreciate it. Whose eyeballs are those? I see two eyeballs. Who's on? Who logged on? Sylvia, can you hear me? Let me know, please. Praise the Lord. All right, thank you, so we appreciate it. Can you hear me good? We'll start at 707. 707, amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. You know, my, uh, my son and my daughter-in-law, Brittany, and my granddaughters moved back in. And she's got me singing that shark. <laughs> I'll be finding myself walking around my house singing that bait, man. What's wrong with me? What's up, Yvonne? How you doing this evening? God bless you. Doing that shark song, man. My granddaughter. She'll be walking around. Shark. I'll be catching myself doing that. Like, oh, shut up, man. What's wrong with me? Anyway. Amen. 707, we're going to get started on this Bible study. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Share the page. Make sure we share the page. Get this word out. Amen. Get the word of God out. I hope you came prepared and ready to receive the word. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. Good evening, Christina. Blessings to you and David. You guys have been together for a long, long, long time, man. God bless you guys, though. Amen, amen. Pray that all is well with you and David out there. I know you guys are in the Central Valley now. Amen. But we're going to go ahead and get started at 7.07. Give some people time to jump on. The late bloomers. And then we're going to get into the word. Amen. Share the page. Share the page. <clears throat> oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh. Three more minutes, 707, we're going to get started. Oh, Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. <coughs> oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow it washes white as snow it washes white as snow hallelujah amen praise the lord the blood of jesus washes white as snow amen <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to get started at 7.07, a couple of minutes, get people to get on. and uh, But I'm going to ask that you share the page, share the Word of God, amen. Post it on your page. 
And let's get the word out there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We got a good little word today. Um, the title of the message is A Total Surrender. Woo, come on. A Total Surrender. It's what we're going to be speaking on tonight, amen? <clears throat> oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. Like the Pendleton? Of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we're just going to pray. Father, we just come before you tonight, God, as we give thanks for this time and the opportunity to be here tonight, Father God. We thank you for your wonderful love, God, for your mercy and grace and sovereignty that has been bestowed upon our lives. Father, we thank you this evening for your strength, Father, for understanding, God, for discernment, Father God. We thank you for your Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, Lord. I ask and pray, as John 3.30 says, God, that I must decrease, God, that you would increase, God. Lord, that you would set me aside this evening, God, and have your way, Lord, that every word that proceedeth out of my mouth, God, comes from you and your Holy Spirit, God. There's no script, God. We are fully dependent upon you. And fully dependent upon your Holy Spirit, God, to move in a mighty way tonight, God. We ask and pray that every heart and every mind be open, God, to receive your word, Father God, this evening, God. We thank you, Lord. We love you, God. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and honor, God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. Amen. I just want to thank you all for being here this evening. Amen. And we're going to we're gonna get into this word. Um, I'm going to ask that you share the page. Put it on your on your page, you know what I mean, and share it. And um, this evening, we're going to talk about a total surrender, amen? You know, the Lord that gave me this message a while back, and I started putting it together, and I was going to share it a couple of weeks ago when we did Bible studies, but the Lord had another message for me to share, amen? And, and we're going to share this message tonight. What, what I'm seeing and um, what the Lord is showing me is that we've got a lot of uh, mediocre Christians out there. We've got a lot of people that, that want 100% of the blessings of God, and they're only giving God 40% of their life, amen? 50% of their life, 60% of their life. They're not giving God 100%, amen? So we got people that are straddling the fence. We have people that are lukewarm, amen? And um, God doesn't operate like that, amen? God, God wants all of us. He wants a total surrender. And that's the title of this message this evening is a total surrender. And I ask, you know, that you share this page and we're going to get into this right now. But I want to share something really quick. Um, I was at the gym a while back on one of the treadmills and it was facing the treadmills at 24 hour fitness where I go. It faces a window and you can see the parking lot. And I'm looking out the window and I'm, and I'm doing my thing, you know, and I was looking out in the parking lot and I'm watching people come in for a workout before heading home for the day. And after a few minutes, a guy pulls up and he gets out of his car. And he's a large guy, and he takes some effort for him to get out of his small car. Amen. It's a small little car, and he's still in his office clothes. But I watch as he reaches in to grab his gym bag. He puts it over his shoulder, and then he leans in the car one more time to grab something else. And he comes out of the car, and he's holding the cup that has a red spoon in it. Amen. You get what's happening here? This man is finishing off his blizzard from Dairy Queen. As he walks into the gym for his workout, he stands right outside and he finishes it up, amen? And he takes his final bites and then he throws his cup into the trash and he walks in for his workout. <coughs> this man wants to get in shape, amen? But he still doesn't want to, to make any personal sacrifices, amen? That's how a fan of Jesus is. A fan will try and follow Jesus and accept the invitation of Christ to follow Jesus, but they don't want to say no to sacrifices. Amen? That's how a fan will try and follow Jesus. A fan will try to accept the invitation of Christ to follow, but they don't want to say no to sacrifices. Amen? They don't want to say no to themselves and the things that they desire and the things that they love. Amen? Amen. And Luke 9.23 says this, 
Jesus makes it clear that if we are going to follow him, a casual, no strings attached arrangement is impossible. Amen? You can't follow Christ half half heartedly. You've got to be 100% committed. And the reason why I'm going to share this message is because you have to understand something. The devil is 100% committed in the work that he does. And yet you got Christians that are being mediocre Christians today, half stepping it with Jesus. Amen? You know, uh, my son, and, and a lot of you know, a lot of you know, my son was recently murdered. Amen? And if it wasn't for my foundation in Christ, I don't know where I would be today. But I'm 100% committed to God. And I have my moments. I had a moment today. I was at the cemetery. I went to go sit and pray and just... Let it out, you know, let it out. I miss my son. I, I really, really do. We would talk every day, every other day, you know. Even if it was a text message, Facebook message, we always talked. We always communicated. Um, I was always there for him, amen. But what we have to understand is that the devil's a 100% committed to taking out our lives. And yet you got Christians that are half-stepping it. And I, and I posted the other day that I see Christians, I seen Christians this past weekend, Flying the Mexican flag, flying the Huelga bird flag for Cinco de Mayo, but yet they weren't flying the Christian flag. They weren't letting people know that I'm a Cristiano, I'm a Christian, amen. They wanted them to know that I'm part of what's going on in the Cinco de Mayo celebration. I don't celebrate Cinco de Mayo. To me, it's just a big, another reason for Mexicans to go out and create chaos and get drunk, amen. But it's just like, man, these, these are people, these are Christians that say they're Christians. They'll post once in a while about Christianity, but they're posting more about car show events and events that they're going to and events that they're doing, amen? And um, they're, they're half-stepping it with God. I can't do that. I'm a Christian. Everybody in my office knows I'm a Christian. Everybody knows I'm sold out to God. Everybody in my office knows I'm a pastor. Everybody knows where I go. They know who I am. They know that I'm a Christian. I'm 100% committed to God. If I wasn't 100% committed to God, then I would be like this guy walking into the gym and eating a uh, 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 a blizzard from uh, Dairy Queen, amen? Half whole heart, half step in it. We can't have that, amen? And Luke 9.23, he says, He was saying to them, this was Jesus, He was saying to them all, If anyone, if Jesus says, If anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Amen? And follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, this is the one who will save it. Verse 25 says, For what good does it does a person if he gains the whole world but loses or forfeits his own life? For whoever is ashamed of me of my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and the holy angels. Amen. Jesus says, If anyone wants to come after me, you've got to deny yourself. You've got to deny your fun. You've got to deny your goals. You've got to deny the deny the desires of the things that you want to do in this world. You have to understand that you now belong. If you're committed to God, you belong to Jesus. Amen. He, he's not half-stepping it with you. He didn't half-step when he went to that cross. He gave 100% of his life to go down that cross for you and I. And we got people today that are half-stepping it. One foot in the world, one foot in the church. Amen? We can't have that. Amen? We can't have that. I don't know about you, but I can't play that role. And, and I was just thinking this morning when I was in prayer and I started to break, I began to think that like, man, God, you saved me. You saved me in 1992, November 13th. It was Friday the 13th, 1992, God. You saved me. And the words that I spoke to the Lord, I made a vow unto the Lord. And the book of Ecclesiastes, it's not a part of my message, says that it's better to not make a vow than to make a vow and not keep it. And I told the Lord that night that I went to the altar. I said, God, if you're for real, I don't know, this is what I said. I said, Savas man, if you're for real, and you take me out of this alcohol life, this drug life, and this gang life. I will serve you for the rest of my life. And that night, I got instant deliverance, man, from a nine-year cocaine addiction, gang life, alcoholism. God set me free. And I've never looked back. I've never looked back. I've been 100% committed throughout this whole time. I've lost a lot of relationships. I've lost friends. I've lost family along the way. But it was God that saved me. Not those people, amen? Not those relationships, not those friends, not those families, amen? It wasn't them. It was God that saved my life, and I've been committed to the Lord ever since. He says, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself. I've denied myself before God, amen? 
I've said, Lord, here I am. Lord, use me in the capacity that you want to use me. And today, men and women are half-stepping in with God, but they want 100% of the blessings of God. They want God's blessings. They want God to provide. They want God to do this. They want God to do that. But yet, they're not giving their all to God. Amen? How can we do that? And you're going to see as we get into this message, it's going to get deep. And it's going to be some ouch moments for some individuals. Amen? You got churches today that are compromising in the things of God. You know, you got you got ministries that are that are doing uh, car shows. They're doing fundraiser car shows for their ministry, but they're having se secular bands. And I'm like, man, how do you do this? How do you do this and say you're raising money for your ministry, but every band that you got out there, every point of entertainment is all secular bands? Amen. I I don't understand that. And you got pastors that are co-signing it. And you got pastors that are sharing that event. I'm like, wow, how do you do that? How do you do that? Amen? People are, and the church are compromising today. But I'm going to tell you right now, the devil's not half-stepping. The devil's not compromising. See, the devil, when he took my son's life, when my son's life was taken, he thought he was going to take me out. And I'm going to ask you right now to pray for my kids and their family members the day that we found out my son passed away, his cousin died that same day. Amen? And just the other day, two days ago, I got a call from my daughter that their other cousin passed away on Sunday. And this was uh, three, my son, my niece, and their other cousin, that was three of them within two months. All nieces and nephews of my kids aunts on their side three family deaths in a month amen and one they found out we found out passed away on the day that my I found out my son passed away and the one that passed away on Sunday passed away on the birthday of the one that passed away when my son passed found out when we found out my son passed away and they were all three cousins and one was probably about 38, 39. My son was 38. But the devil's no joke, amen? And you guys are over here playing with Christianity, amen? But the devil's out there. He says, you, and, and, and he says that if anybody wants to come after me, that you got to take up your cross and follow me, amen? Take up your cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake is the one who will save it, amen? When you lose your life for God, you're going to save your life. And you've got to understand, the devil is not playing. He is taking lives. We've had, since January, on my side of the family, we've had like eight deaths already, man. Eight deaths already. Amen? In this short period of time. Amen? And the devil's not playing around. But some of you are. And it's time to get serious. You can't come after Jesus without denying yourself. The phrase denying himself isn't just the idea of saying no to yourself or even resisting yourself. The idea here is that you don't even acknowledge or recognize your own existence. Amen? You don't recognize your existence. You're here for God and God only. Amen? But some of you are fornicating with the world. Some of you are fornicating with the world and talking people that, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. Man, don't, if you're fornicating with the world and you got one foot in the world and one foot in the church, man, don't even tell people you're a Christian because they're going to look at you and say, like, wow, okay, if you're a Christian and you're doing the very same thing that I do, why do I got to go to church? You're leaving a bad taste in somebody's mouth out there. Amen? I see your postings. I see where you're at. What do you have in common with those things of the world? In, in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the word of God says, separate yourselves from the unbelievers. What, do you, what does light have in common with darkness? Jesus didn't walk this world holding hands with the devil. Why are you out there hanging out with people of the world and entertaining yourself with the things of the world? Amen? Why? Has God not been good to you? Did God not save you? Did God not set you free at one time or another? I'm sure he did. But somewhere along the line, we became relaxed and kind of backed away from the things of God. Maybe it got a little too intense for you. Maybe the fire was a little too hot, amen? Maybe God began to deal with things in your life that you don't want nobody to know about or you don't want nobody to deal with, so you backed off and said, hey, wait a minute. 
Let me just become a fan of Jesus, sit in the stands, and follow from afar so I don't get caught up in all that madness, amen? Because when you become a follower of Christ, you get into the trenches and you battle in that spiritual realm. You battle on behalf of your kids, battle on behalf of your grandkids, you battle on behalf of your family. But some of you aren't even battling, man. Some of you aren't even getting on your knees and interceding, amen? And we've got people out there, family members that are dying, people that are homeless, and you're out here living your life. You know what, what, what this thing did with my son? It drove me deeper and deeper to God, knowing that, you know what, God, I need you that much more today than I did yesterday. You know, I've done so many funerals here in San Jose for individuals that have died on our streets and young men and young women and I see the grief that the mother and the father have bearing their children and I always pray, I always say, God, let me feel the pain and let me feel the burden of other people and I would feel their pain. I would feel their burden but guess what? Now I'm on the other end where I have, I've lost a child and I feel it that much more, man. I feel it that much more what they're going through. I can understand what they're feeling now. Amen. I could feel their pain that much more because I'm dealing with the very same thing, amen? But it's driven me deeper into God. It's driven me that, you know what, there's more that I got to do, God. And if it's me by myself, God, then so be it, amen? Let's go, amen? We talk a lot about the truth that being a Christian means believing in Jesus. But we don't say much about denying ourselves. Amen. That is such an unappealing message. How do you deny yourself in a culture that says it's all about yourself? Amen. How do you deny yourself when we live in a culture that tells you it's all about yourself? We got pastors doing that too. Chase your goals. Chase your dreams. If your dream doesn't line up with the will of God, what are you chasing? Amen? Everything that we do as Christians has to line up with the will of God. But a lot of you are out there trying to make your will become God's will. But we got a world today telling you it's all about yourself and some of you are believing that gospel other than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, come on, somebody. How do you deny yourself in a culture that says it's all about yourself? In Matthew chapter 19, listen to this. I want you to hear this. In Matthew chapter 19, we meet a man whose name we don't even we don't even learn enough about him from the gospels that he is referred to as the rich young ruler. Amen. He's followed a path that has led to wealth and power. That's the path that most of us are trying to find. Amen. Wealth and power in this world. I don't care about that. I've learned it. I came with nothing. I'm going to leave with nothing. Amen. I'm going to leave with nothing. So I'm not chasing those things. I'm chasing souls, man. I'm trying to win people over to Christianity. I'm trying to introduce people to Jesus. I'm trying to, reach, to, trying to lose, reach that, that drug addict, that gang member, that alcoholic that has, feels like there's no hope. The other day I went to go pray over a house for some people. All three of them were drug addicts. And I prayed for them and they accepted Christ. And I was telling them that I, I feel for you because I'm an ex-drug addict. I feel for you because other people that I know have battled that very same demon. Amen? And you're battling your demons. And I feel for you. I understand what you're going through. Amen? But here was a man that was, that he was living a life that led to wealth and power. That's the path that most of us are trying to find. He comes to Jesus with a question. And in verse 16, he says this. He asks, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? What good thing, he asked, must I do? See, your good works aren't going to get you there. The good thing that you do isn't going to get you there. Listen to what he says. You have to give him credit for asking the right question. He wants to know, how do I get to heaven? But even the way he asks, it reveals the heart of, it reveals the heart of a fan. He says, what must I do? What must I do? To get to heaven. What must I do? He asked. That word could be translated. What must I acquire? Or what must I earn? To get into heaven. He thinks it's going to be an impressive resume. I've done this. I've done that. 
I'm a big boss here at my work. I've ran an office of this. I've done this and I've done that. He thinks it's going to be a, 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 an answer with an impressive resume. Amen? That that's going to get him in. Eventually, Jesus tells us, man, that he needs to do what he needs to do. In verse 21, Jesus says, sell all of your possessions and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Amen? Then come follow me. Jesus invites the man to become his father, but first the man is, to, is told to sell his possessions and give it to the poor. Go give everything you own, sell it and give it away. Whatever you get, give it to the poor. What are you going to do if Jesus tells you, give me that? Give me your kids. Give me that. Give your job up and come follow me. What are you going to do? You know that for 17 years, I was a machinist. And then one day I became a general manager of a machine shop. And then it got slow. <coughs> and I was let go. I was laid off. I was making a house money. I was making, I was making some money. But um, after that I prayed. And I told God, I said, Lord, this was back in 2000, 2001. I told God, Lord, I need a job where I can make decent money keep a roof over my head and food on my table and be more available for ministry. And then one day, I read an ad. An ex-football player took, was taking 50 people and teaching them the mortgage and real estate business. I went in there. I gave up my job. I gave up machining. I sold all my tools. I got rid of everything because I knew that's where God wanted me. Out of those 50 people, I'm the only one that stood around. And that was in 2003. Here it is, 20 years later, I'm doing the same job. But the reason why I'm doing this job today is because it gives me the availability to be available for ministry at any given time. If I get called to juvenile hall, if I go there, if I go there, if I get called to a school, I get called to go talk to somebody, I have, I'm available for ministry. My boss knows what I do. He says, John, you can make two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. And I told him I could. I probably could, but I'm not chasing a dollar, man. I'm chasing the will of God to do the work of God. I'm a God chaser. God will take care of everything else. And he will. He will. But I'm so available for ministry. For juvenile hall, whatever God, wherever the Lord leads me, I'm able to be able to go do the work of God. How many of you are willing, if God tells you to give up your job and come serve me, man? Come serve me wholeheartedly. Give 100% of your life to me and watch what I'll do with you and through you. Amen? How many of you are willing to do that today? See, this man was told to go sell all of his possessions and then give it to the poor. His face with the choice of following Jesus or keeping his stuff, but he, is, he was faced with the f choice of following Jesus or keeping his stuff, but he couldn't do both. You can't do both today. You can't do both. God is looking for men and women that have totally, are willing to totally surrender their lives to God. He doesn't want part of you. He wants all of you. Amen. Check it out. Let's go. There was no way to follow Jesus without denying himself. Many people want to make this story about money, but it's not as much about money as it is about following Jesus. Amen. Jesus puts this man at a crossroad. Amen. He put this man at a crossroad. And that's what happened in my life when I was a machinist to where I'm at today. I was at a crossroad. And I had to make a choice. Amen. Amen. And I made that choice. I'm going to follow you, God. Whatever you have for me, God, I'm going to give you my life, man. My life does not belong to me. My life belongs to God. To be able to do what he wants to do, when he wants to do, through it. Amen? My life belongs to God. I am 100% committed. I don't care what people think about me. This morning, I was listening to a song as I was praying. Actually, it was at the cemetery. And, and it was, it's called, It's My Desire. And the lyrics say, if you could see what Jesus has done for me, then you'll understand why it's my desire to serve him, to live for Jesus. Because he took me out of that miry clay. He took me out of that pit of hell. He took me out of drug addiction, alcoholism. He took me out of that gang life, that lifestyle. He took me out of a place where I was destroying my life. Amen. And that's why I choose to serve him. I don't care what people say. 
I've lost relationships along the way. I've lost family members that have stayed away from me because I'm serving God now. That's okay. I love my family. I love them all. Amen. But I'm committed to God. Amen. I'm committed to God, 100% committed. Now listen, let's go on. Many people want to make this story about money, but it's not as much about money as it is about following Jesus. Jesus puts this man on his crossroads. He can follow the path that leads to money, or he can follow Jesus. But you can't follow both. You can't do both, amen? You can't do both. So what does this all mean for you and me? Is selling everything a requirement to follow Jesus? Well, it may be, in fact. I would say, the more defensive you are of Jesus' words to this man, the more likely it is that Jesus might be saying them to you. Amen? If you find this offensive, that Jesus told this man to go sell all of his possessions and give it to the poor and come follow me, and you find it offensive, maybe that God, that's what God is trying to tell you today. Maybe not literally sell all your possessions, but get rid of all those things that are holding you back from serving God. Some of you are chasing a man. Some of you are chasing a woman. Some of you are chasing a job. Some of you are chasing money. Some of you are chasing recognition. Some of you are chasing adoration. Some of you are working for the applause. Amen. Some of you are doing it for all the wrong reasons. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Some of you are doing it for all the wrong reasons. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. What is true is that everyone who follows Jesus will find themselves or their herself at a similar crossroads that this man in Matthew chapter 19 found himself in. You won't be able to take the path of following Jesus without walking away from the different path. He wanted to follow Jesus, but he was forced to choose between Jesus and his stuff. And he chose his stuff. He wouldn't deny himself. What choice will you make this evening? What choice will you make? God is telling you. Man, if you don't believe me, go read 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Amen? Where he talks about separating yourself from the unbelievers. Amen? I get invited to a lot of stuff. I get invited to a lot of Christian events. Hey, come on, we're over here having a Christian concert. What do Christians have to do with concerts? Amen? Why are Christian rappers out there performing. You're supposed to be a minister of a music, a minister of music, not a performer in Christ. Amen. You're supposed to be out there ministering to music and leading people onto Christ. Not they're having they're having hip hop concerts. Not they're out there just man entertaining the crowd. I won't go to those things. I won't go to those things. Because that's not a place for me to be. Maybe it's a place for you to be. But it's not a place for me to be. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, I, I, I think it's verse 14 or somewhere on there. I can look it up. But he talks about separating yourself from the unbelievers. He says, what does light have in common with dark? Jesus didn't walk on this world holding hands with the devil. Why are we some of you? He says, separate yourselves from them. He says, come out from what is unclean. I, then I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters. But if you don't, if you don't, there's repercussions. There's consequences. And a lot of you today are going through consequences and repercussions because you're half-stepping it with God. You're not going through 100% and you're putting the blame on the devil. It's not the devil. It's a result of your actions. It's a result of your decisions and the actions that you are making. It's, a lot of you give the devil too much credit. It's not the devil. He's sitting back on my seat tapping his toe. Yeah, yeah that's me. And it ain't him. It's a result of your actions. Some of you anyway. Some of you, yes, the devil's attacking because you're a threat to his kingdom. But some of you need to sit down and really evaluate your life and ask. Why? Because when things start going wrong in my life, the first thing I do is go to God. I get on my knees and I pray and I'm like, Lord, is this something I'm doing? If there's if something I'm doing, then reveal it to me. Let me know. Then if it isn't something that I'm doing and God says, you're good, eh? You're good. Then I know there are attacks of the devil. I know that they are attacks of the devil. My son's murder was an attack from the devil to try to take me out. Amen? Just like Job. And God took me to Job after that happened. God took me to Job. Amen? And Job would intercede on the behalf of his children all the time. Forgive them, God, of their sins. 
Amen? But a lot of times, it's not the devil. Amen? It's a result of your actions. Your lack of serving God. Have step in it with the Lord. Amen? Because God wants all of you, not part of you. So things are going to come your way because he's trying to get your attention. He's trying to get you. You're struggling over things that you've been struggling with for 5, 6, 10, 15 years. Amen? You're still struggling with the same thing. You're still on the same level. You're still in the same place. You haven't moved up in God. Oh, I'll go to church, Pastor John. What I Okay. Devil goes to church too. And sometimes the devil doesn't even go. He sends some of you. He sends other people on his behalf. Amen. Going to church isn't enough. I'm here at Bible studies, Pastor. That, that isn't enough. Committing your life 100%, totally surrender to God is what God wants. Amen. Let's go. Matthew 10, 38 says, And the one who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Ooh, come on. I didn't say that. It's in the Bible. If you read your Bible, you'll know it's there. He says, And the one who does not take his cross, take up his cross and follow me after me is not worthy of me. He, had, he the one who has found his life will lose it. And the one who has lost his life on my account will find it. Amen? Are you picking up your cross today? Only you know that, and God knows that. But can you say you're 100% committed tonight? Because I'm going to tell you, I could tell which ones aren't. I could tell by the things you post. Now watch, people are going to start posting things and, and blocking me so I can't see their posts no more. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. The reward is found in verse 40 of Matthew 10. The one who receives you, receives me. And the one who receives me, receives the one who sent me. Jesus was sent by God. If people receive us with the word of God, then they receive Christ. If they receive Christ, then they receive the one who sent him, which was God. That's the reward. That's the reward. Amen. How many people are you leading to God? How many people have you led to God in the last year, in the last six months, in the last three months, in the last month and a half, in the last few weeks? How many people have you led to God? But you tell people you're a Christian, but you post Christian scripture sometimes, and then on the weekends you post your worldly events that you're at. Amen. And people are looking at you and they're thinking like if he or she is a Christian and doing those things and I'm doing the very same thing so I guess I'm going to heaven también. I'm a Christian too then. Amen? What are you doing different than the world? Amen? Let's go. We can't half step it with Jesus. He's not looking for people that are unsure if they want to follow him or not. He's looking for people like, like Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, use me. Total surrender of God to God, amen? Some people don't want to commit or fully surrender to Jesus, but yet they want the benefits of Jesus. People, when they're going through things, want prayer for what they're facing. But they won't even get down for, and pray themselves. But they want other people to pray for them. I want God's help right now. And God will move on your behalf. And then you go right back to the very thing that you shouldn't be doing. That God did. God allowed to come your way to get your attention. And then you go right back after he moves on your behalf. I know people like that. I see people like that. I know them. Amen. So check it out. <clears throat> Luke 14 27 says this whoever does not carry his own cross and comes after me cannot be my disciple mm, come on whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple what does it mean to carry his own cross or her own cross it means to to lay down your ego to lay down your own strength and set it aside. 
Taking up our cross means instead of picking up those weaknesses that we often, that we so often try to run away from in life. Taking up our cross means carrying around those places where we are vulnerable, places we were maybe we even be exposed to embarrassed and in shame, amen? That means walking before people and say, Sawski, I'm a Christian, I got my cross, I'm carrying my cross, and I'm a full-blooded, 100% Christian. Amen? Laying aside your agenda. Laying aside your ego. Laying aside your strength. When I see people post, people in Christ post like, I got this. I don't got to worry, I got this. You know what that means? You know what the word I refers to? Pride. When they say, I got this, that means I don't need you, God. I got this. That's pride right there. That's pride. I need God every day and every moment of my life. I pray in the morning. I pray throughout the day. And I pray in the evening. I confess my sins in the morning. I confess my sins throughout the day. And I confess my sins before I go to sleep. Because I want to be pure before God. Amen. I want to be pure before God. Amen. And people are not 100% committed to God. But they want 100% of the blessings from God. Amen? Come on. He says, whoever does not carry his own cross and comes after me cannot be my disciple. What we are to do in Matthew, the Great Commission, in Matthew chapter 20, he says, go out and make disciples of all nations. Amen? Amen? Go out and make, we are to make disciples. That's what I'm trying to do here, is make disciples with you guys. People that are going to be 100% committed, 100 committed and follow God. We've been sharing message and message after message after message through Bible study. And it's all geared to building you up in Christ. Making you a disciple of Christ so that you're getting 100% benefits from Jesus. But some of you aren't. You're robbing yourself short, man. You're robbing yourself short. Amen? And all you got to do is look around and you're going to see it. Begin to ask God to remove the scales from your eyes so that you can see what He sees. But before you pray that, you better be willing to be able to take what, shot, what God shows you. Because when you pray for God to remove the scales from your eyes and to be able to see with the eyes of Christ through your eyes, He's going to start exposing things to you. Exposing things to you about people and you're going to be like, wow, I need to stay away from that person. Amen? Because He will show you if you're genuine. People talk about spiritual warfare. I have this book on spiritual warfare and I read it and I've shared it with other people and they put it down like, man, I ain't ready for this, man. Because it exposes, it exposes Disney. Walt Disney, it exposes Disney and what how demonic Disney is. And you guys out there enjoying those things. But you're not ready for that. You're not ready for that. You've got to be prayed up. You've got to be strong in the Lord to be able to engage in spiritual warfare, to be able to acknowledge what's going on in the spiritual realm. Be able to acknowledge what God is going to show you in the spiritual realm because it's not the nice. While you're half-stepping in this walk with God, the devil is 100% committed to take the joy away from you, to rob, to steal, and to kill everything in your life and in your family's life. He's not half-stepping it. Amen? He's serious about what he's doing. Amen? So it means to lay, around your, lay down your own ego, your own strength. Stop going around saying, I got this, because that's pride. The Bible, the Bible says a proud pride comes before a man, before a fall, and that God is opposed to the proud. When you're saying, I got this, you're saying, I don't need you, God. I got this. No, God, I need you, Lord. I need you every minute of my life, God. I need you in every area of my life, God. I need you in my business, God. I need you with clients, God. Because some clients, sometimes clients can come off the wall, amen? And you got to be patient enough and loving and caring enough to be able to encounter and to endure those things at times. I facilitate in juvenile hall. Sometimes you get some knuckleheads. And you got to be able to hold your own in Christ and be able to deal with those things in a godly way. Amen? I see your posts. Talk about haters. People don't hate you. It's a figment of your imagination. Amen. And you talk about haters. Jesus said they hated me. They're going to hate you. So praise God and stop talking about your haters. Amen. But people are out there doing it. All you got to do is, is pay attention to the posts. I'm very observant. When I'm out and about, I'm always just looking around see what's going on. You know, I'll, I'll engage with people, but I'm always, 
I'm always looking to see what's going on. Because one time, one time, a friend of mine, a pastor, he was on the weak side, the west side of San Jose, and he was outside sharing with somebody. And out of the bushes, this man came and ran and, and stuck a knife through the pastor's mouth, stabbed him in the mouth, and it went through and came out through the bottom. Amen? And, and they rushed that pastor. He was out there witnessing. And they rushed that pastor to the hospital. And he survived. He's okay. But what happened was they found that man curled up naked in the bushes with the knife. Demonic. The demons are out there and they're real. But some of you, the devil don't even attack you and don't even come after you because he's got you where he wants you. Have step in it. Lukewarm. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go. Many churches have become companies. Amen. Listen to this one. Many churches have become companies that measure success by the number of customers that they have attracted in their congregation. Amen. Many churches have become companies that measure success by the number of customers they have attracted. How do we get more customers? By trying to make the customer, the congregation, feel comfortable, important, and happy. We want the product, in this case, following Jesus, to come off as appealing and as comfortable as possible. So when somebody comes to church shopping, we try to show them what we have to offer. Oh, we have this ministry. We have that ministry. Oh, we have this. Amen. We have this to meet your need. They're selling their product. Amen. They're selling what they have to offer to the congregants that come. Amen. They're trying to make following Jesus appealing. There's nothing appealing about following Jesus. Because when you get into the trenches, you're battling. You're battling. Amen. You don't think. That, that, that it doesn't get weary. I get weary at times, man. Battling, fighting against the demonic forces. But I know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Yes, they're going to be formed, but none shall prosper. I stand on the word of God and I take God to his word. But churches today are, are, are trying to sell their product their ministries and what they have to offer to make it appealing to, oh, we got a children's ministry that's off the hood. Oh, we got a youth ministry that does this and does that. They're like, bring your family in. Be real with them. Tell them it's going to cost you some things to serve God. You may lose some things along the way. You may lose some family members along the way. You may lose a job or two or three. I've lost jobs. But not because of the job situation, it was because of God. Every time as a machinist, I would step into a new job, my new first day there, I would say, okay, God, who am I here for? Who am I here for? I'm not here just to work, God. I'm here for somebody. And each time, God would reveal while I'm here, while I'm there. And then when it was over, it was time to move on to another job. Same thing again. Why am I here, God? When God puts clients before me, why, God? What's going on with this client? And the Lord begins to reveal things to me. Before I know it, I'm sharing and I'm witnessing with my clients. And then I'm praying for my clients. I'm praying for their situations. Amen? But we have churches that are attracting customers. Not souls. Customers. This is what we have to offer. This is what we're selling. Can we get back to the basics of Christianity? Amen? Can we get back to that? Can we get back to telling people, like I'm telling you right now, it's going to cost you some things when you're 100% committed to God. Get in, get out, or get run over. Amen? Get in, get out, or get run over. Too many people have walked away from Jesus because it's too hard. I know, I've seen it. Amen? Too many people don't want to commit 100% to God. So they've walked away. Did you know that the Bible says it's better in the book of Second, in the book of Peter, he says, it's better to not know God than to know God and walk away from Him. It's better to not know Him. It's better for the sinners to not know Him than for a, son, a, a saint to know God and walk away from God. And I know a lot of people that have done that. Amen? Because they weren't 100% committed. And just at my, at my son's funeral, some, uh, a guy that I've known since I was a little kid coming trying to tell me about my walk with God and what I need to do. And I told him, I said, you know what, brother? I said, I'm going to tell you something. I've been walking with the word, with the Lord for 30 years. I've not wavered. Amen. My, my foundation is pretty solid. 
I said, and I told him, I said, don't you come and try to tell me how to serve God when you've left the Lord and you're back in the world and you're not even committed to God and you're trying to come tell me. I know what I got to do and I know what needs to be done. Amen. The Bible says, do not listen to this counsel of the wicked. Don't listen to the world trying to counsel you, man. God is your counselor. The Holy Spirit is your counselor. Go to God. Go to the Holy Spirit. Go to the Word of God. People are taking advice from people in the world. I'm like, it's not going to benefit you. They're not serving God. That's the blind leading the blind then. Amen? Can I get a witness? Come on. Let's go. Many churches have become companies. Remember that. They measure success by the number of customers they have attracted. Amen. Hallelujah. God forgive us, Lord. Luke 9.57 says this. As they were going on the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Listen. And Jesus said to him, The foxes have holes and the birds of the sky have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. <coughs> Verse 59. And he said to another, follow me. But that other said, Lord, permit me first to go and bury my father. Verse 60, but he said to him, allow the dead to bury the dead, their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim everywhere the kingdom of God. Another said, Lord, I will follow you, Lord. But first permit me go, to go say goodbye to those at my home. But Jesus, listen to what he said. But Jesus said, no one. <clears throat> after putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Hmm, come on, somebody. When this man said, I will follow you wherever you go, Jesus said, the foxes have holes and the birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Jesus was telling him, sometimes it's going to get uncomfortable. Are you sure? Because it's going to get uncomfortable. I remember in 2009, I was homeless, sleeping in my van. I was a pastor, sleeping in my suburban for three or four months. And only a couple of people knew. I didn't share because it was my cup to drink and to go through. I didn't need to go share with anybody because I didn't want a pity party from people. And was somebody that went, one of the persons that knew said, Man, you're a pastor. Why are you sleeping in your car? What makes me exempt from the trials and tribulations and afflictions? What makes me exempt? Because I have a title of a, of a pastor? Now, first of all, I'm a disciple of Christ. I'm a servant unto the Lord. I'm a soldier for God that bears the title of a pastor. I don't take the title lightly, but that's who I am first, a disciple of Christ. And I am not exempt from those trials and tribulations. I am not exempt from those afflictions. Amen? But I had the peace of God when I was sleeping in my suburban. And I knew that I had counted the cost a long time ago because a year after I was saved, the Lord told me I was going to become a pastor. I never chased it. I didn't become a pastor until 15 years later. And it was nothing of my doing. It was my pastor that called me in the office and said, the Lord has put it in my heart to ordain you as a pastor. And I was like, wow, you sure? He says, I know what God said. That was in 2007. Amen. But I'm a disciple of Christ and I am not exempt for those things. So I know that sometimes serving God is going to be uncomfortable. It's not hunky-dory. It's all not peaches and cream like some of you people make it. Some of these people, these churches make it like, oh, go after your dreams, go after prosperity. And they're not telling their church that, you know what, if you commit 100% to God, there's going to be some trials coming. Amen. People weren't giving you the true gospel. Can I get a witness? Let's go. He says it, verse 60, But Jesus said to him, No one, after putting his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. We know that when Lot's wife looked back, she became a pillar of salt. You know that? Amen? There is no looking back or going back, and many people today are looking back or even going back. Amen? Listen to me. <clears throat> Exodus 14 12 says this is this not the word that we spoke to you in Egypt saying leave us alone so that we may serve the Egyptians for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness this was the Israelites when Moses had led them out of Egypt and Moses went up to the mountain to go seek the Lord 
and the Egyptian, the, the Israelites were becoming unruly. They were they were becoming um, like confused, and they turned around and said, "For it would have been better for us to remain in Egypt and serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. It would have been better for us to go back to the world and serve the world than to die right here in God." Amen. How many of you have gone back to Egypt after God has already taken you out of Egypt because it got a little hard serving God? That you know that God is with you. The Word of God says that He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen? That you will find refuge in Christ. That He will be your strength. That He will be your Redeemer. That He will be your everything. That He will be your fortress. That He will be your strong tower. But some of you have went back to Egypt because you thought it would be a little bit easier to go back to the world than to die in Christ or go through the wilderness in God. Mm, come on, somebody. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what the Spirit is conveying here? It's time to stop half-stepping it with God. Amen? I'm in real estate and residential commercial loans, and there's a legal document called a quick claim deed. It's used when a person is signing over all their rights to their property or a possession that they once had in sharing with somebody else. A quick claim deed. I'm signing off my rights. Amen? And I'm giving you 100% of the rights to that property or whatever it is that we shared. Amen? I'm giving you 100%. Amen? They are surrendering all their rights. When Jesus, listen to me, listen to me. When Jesus, when Jesus invites us to follow, there's not a lot of paperwork involved. But he's looking for some kind of quick claim deed from you. When you decide to follow Jesus, you are signing over your house, your car, your bank accounts, your career, your marriage, your children, your future, and anything else that once claimed, once, once you had claimed to. You have no more rights, and nothing can be withheld. You deny yourself, and you sign a quick claim deed on your life, giving God 100% of your life. Amen. But some of you have not signed that quick claim deed with Jesus. Ooh, come on. Hallelujah. You understand what the Spirit is telling you tonight? It's time to knock the nonsense off. It's time to serve God. There's no half stepping. There's no half stepping with Jesus. Amen. You're either all in or you're not. We're going to go right here. Check it out. We're, we're going to get ready to close this up. Revelations. 3.15, he says, I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were hot or cold. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of your mouth. It's not he don't want you straddling the fence. Either you're in or you're out. But don't you straddle that fence. Don't you become lukewarm, telling people that you're a Christian, but yet you've got a foot in the world and you're living just like the world on Saturday night, on Friday night, on Sunday afternoons after you leave church. You're living just like the world, amen, doing the things of the world, amen. He says right here, I will vomit you. The word vomit in the Greek means to violently spit you out. Amen. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have no need of anything. And you do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked inside. Verse 18 says, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich with, in white garments so that you may be clothed yourself and the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed. And I salve may apply to your eyes so that you may see in the spiritual realm. He goes on to say in verse 19, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Verse 20, behold, I stand Stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come and be with him and I will dine with him and he will dine with me. But if you don't open the door to your heart, you will dine alone, he says. There the one who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit with me on my throne. And I also overcame and sat with my father on his throne. The one who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Amen. God knows everything that you're doing. You can't hide nothing from the Word, from God. You can't hide what you're doing in the world. You can't hide it. I can't hide it. Why do you think we got to confess 30 times a day if we fall short 30 times a day? Because without confession of sin, sin separates you. Sin separates you. Here's God. Sin separates you from God. 
And if you're not confessing day, night, morning, evenings, afternoons, you've separated yourself from God. But yet you still want to say you're a Christian and you're indulging in sin. Amen? Let's go. Check it out. You can't play both sides. Amen? Either you're fully surrendered, 100% committed, or you're not. You can't serve God in this world. James 4.4, 4, listen to this one, listen to this one. James 4.4, 4, he says, you adulteresses, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Come on, somebody. I didn't write that. It's in the Bible. If you read it, you know. He calls us, those that are friends with the world, adulteresses. People that are fornicating with the world and trying to serve God. He says, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Therefore, whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. God doesn't turn his back. He says he will never leave us nor forsake us. We turn our back. People turn their backs. And the book of, book of Romans, and this isn't part of my message, but I'm going to share it real quick. <coughs> in the book of Romans chapter 1, he talks about people that are living in, in, a, in a life that they shouldn't be living. And that they're serving the creator more than they are. They're serving the creature more than they are the creator. Amen. They're serving the creature. And the word of God says eventually that God takes his hand off you and turns you over to that life that you want to live. He says, here he is, Satan. He, he wants to live that life. Here he is, Satan. Here he is. He turns you over. And then you start getting more prosperity in the world. And you're thinking, man, God is blessing me. God already took his hand off of you. And turned you over to that lifestyle. Don't I didn't write it. It's in the book of Romans chapter 1. Go read Romans chapter 1. And he says eventually God removes his hand from you. And turns you over to the life that you want to live. The life without God. He'll turn you over. Because you want to continue to live that lifestyle. You kind of want to continue to fornicate with the world. He says you adulterous people. Don't you know the friendship of the world is hostility towards God. And whoever wants to be a friend of the world. Makes himself an enemy of God. Amen. <clears throat> I didn't write it. Last scripture, Joshua 24, 14. He says, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him sincerity. Serve him in sincerity and truth. And do away with the gods which your father served beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. And serve the Lord. He says, But if it's a, if, but if it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, then choose for yourselves today whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served in Egypt, which were beyond the Euphrates River, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. <coughs> he says in verse 14, Fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth, and do away with the gods which your word father served beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Get rid of those things that are attached to you from the world and give your life 100% to God. You, you won't go wrong. Because I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, he talks about not all those that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but those that do my will. And many will say, Lord, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we heal the sick in your name? And Jesus says, I know you're not. Depart from me from you who practice lawlessness. And he was talking to the Christians there. He said, not all of you are going to get to the kingdom of heaven. That right there should put fear into you, man. That you're a Christian and you may not make it to heaven because they weren't committed to God. Because he said, not all of you. He was talking to the Christians. Not all of you that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But those that do my will, those that are 100% committed, those that pick up their cross and follow after me, those that deny themselves, they say, but Lord, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we heal the sick? When you get deep into that word, <coughs> and that passage of scripture, and you go in there and, and, and read on that, break that word down, he's talking about people 
out there prostituting the name of Jesus. Doing what they want to do and trying to do it under the banner of Jesus. Doing their hip-hop entertainment and trying to do it under the banner of Jesus. If God's not leading you to do it and it's you and your desire to do it, amen, and God's not in it, stay away from it. Stay away from it. Because Jesus says not all of you. And he was talking about people that were using the name of Jesus for their own benefit. And there are a lot of people. This person, these people that are doing this car show for their ministry and all they have is secular entertainment there. He's talking to them. Not all of you that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. And those that co-sign that event, you're getting in the same car with them. People ask me if you're going. I said, no, I may show up this year just to film it. Because I know last year they allowed alcohol and they were selling alcohol. Or they, no, they allowed alcohol. I don't know if they were selling it. I didn't go to it last year. People were telling me. So I said, I may show up this year just to film it. Just to show what's going on there. Because that's not a Christian event. And how dare a ministry, a ministry, use the name of Jesus to go do what they're going to do. That's who Jesus was talking to in the book of Matthew. Amen? That's who he was talking to. You. But he says, choose today whom you're going to serve. Amen? And if you read 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 14, that's not even part of my message. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, he says, if my people would humble themselves, he's not talking to the unsaved, he's talking to his people. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, seek me and pray. Amen? He's talking to his people and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal their land. You have to stop and wonder, why is my family going through so much sickness? Why is this going on? What is this happening? I'm a Christian and I'm serving the Lord. But he's talking to my people who are called by my name, would humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and seek me. Amen? He's talking to the believers in Christ. Amen? That's the word tonight. That's the word tonight. And I pray that it ministers to you. And I pray that it brings awareness to you. Because the devil's not playing. He's taking people out left and right, man. Left and right. He's running amok upon, among our children. The things that they're caught in. The demonic things. I mean, like I said, if you sat down and you really took a, Disney, took a look at Disney, you would see the demonic forces that are being played out in there. Amen? And I got a warfare book, a spiritual warfare book. <clears throat> that breaks it down about Disney. Amen? And how demonic they are. But yet, people are allowing the children and people in their family to be entertained by these things. That's the word of the Lord tonight. Amen? A total surrender. God wants a total surrender from your life tonight. And I pray that this minister to you. <clears throat> We're going to pray. I'm going to ask that you share this page Get the word of God out there. We're going to bow our heads and we're going to pray. And I'm going to say a prayer. You can repeat it after me if you want to. You don't have to. We can't hear you. It's between you and God. But let's go. And after we say this prayer, I'm going to pray. Repeat this prayer. Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight. And I ask for the forgiveness of my sins. I thank you, God, for the word that was spoken. And I ask for forgiveness if I've not been 100% totally surrendered to you, God. I believe, God, that Jesus died on that cross for my sins and that he rose three days later so that I may have life. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that he is the Lord and Savior of this world. I invite you into my life and help me, God, to be 100% totally surrendered to you from this day forward. In Jesus' name. Father, we ask and pray right now for your covering, God, upon each and every person that has heard this message right now or at another time, Father God. I pray, God, that, that you would remove the scales from people's eyes, Father God, that you would break every stronghold and every desire for the things of this world, Lord, that they would no longer fornicate with this world, Father God, but be totally committed to you, Father God, because we know that the devil's not playing and that you're not playing, Father God. 
that this is serious business, Father, because as you spoke in the book of Matthew to the believers, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of heaven, God. And in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, talks about if my people, God, as you spoke, you're talking to your people, Father God. So I ask and pray, Father God, that we would make a decision, that they would make a decision tonight, God, or at the time that they hear this message, God, to surrender their lives to you in Jesus' name, God. Amen and amen. God bless you guys. I love you. And Jesus loves you. Amen. Share this word. In Jesus' name. Two weeks. We'll see you again.